noticed, until I committed my first crime. Of people, I was weary. I would often sit outside by myself in town. I witnessed many public shamings and hangings in town square. They hung my old man there in front of me, they knew that I was watching. The demons didn't care. I had no siblings. I had no mama. My mother died as I was born. I raised myself. I lived in a wagon without a horse, that's where I slept, my shirt and my pants were all torn. Nobody would take me in from that town. They all had me labeled as the town square mute. I had them labeled as fools, for day after day I listened in on their conversations when they thought I couldn't hear. I would point my nose toward the mountains and loathe each and every one of them all. I took note of how they act while engaged in mockery behind one another's back. I asked myself why I stayed until the day I left. But for leaving I stole pencils and paper. They wouldn't imagine that I could read and write. I wrote down all of their secrets that I had collected over time. I left pieces of paper all over town throughout the night as they slept. The following day, fingers and guns pointed as the screams and the curses shook the town. The sweet and innocent Delia's husband left in a way sign at the bar. Moments later was seen chasing a new man and naked lady as he held his gun. He fired shots into the air. Townspeople circled Sophie's husband. The mayor, he didn't know what to say when the elderly sister Madeline nearly died with a fright. She walked into the office with a small note and discovered that indeed he and his executive assistant were incredibly gay. Many secrets unfolded. What do you mean my hair looks fake? An angry Mr. Marshall hissed at everyone, red-faced for all of that day. Myrtle and Martha giggled like two chickens after tossing aside the secret to pay. They fought long and hard with one another, not one finger dared to point towards my way. They were all so mesmerized that they went to bed with unlocked doors. That is when my plan to escape really took flight. I thought of how evil these townies must be. Harbert was a wild and dashing young horse. I led him to my wagon, with a cart full of gold and jewelry, before sunrise we began to flee. Later on, upon my travels, I just so happened to find a town where I made my first friend. His name was Cletus, he too had things rough and he carried a frown. He warned me that the new town I had found was equally as mad. He demanded. I've had it pal. Let's get the hell out of this dump. So first thing before departing, I sold the stolen jewelry to a bootlegger. The bootlegger was a wealthy man and he gave us whatever he could. Moving along on our journey, we saw many a beautiful sight. When we finally stopped, we built a log fire near and camped out beside the deepest canyon I'd ever seen in my life. We yelled, behawed and yodeled down into the canyon for fun to see if our echo would come back. What happened instead made my knees grow weak. Hundreds of people with black eyes moaning and groaning. They looked like humans who were half dead. Their bodies and their lips were blue. A cold breeze was rising from down there too. Cletus turned pale from the extraterrestrial sight. A great feeling of death infesting that canyon spooked us good. We turned around to run to the cart when Hubert the horse quickly turned his head. His eyes were black and possessed. Hubert then began speaking. 
his teeth sparkled in the lowering sun and we shook in our vests. I'm one of them too. He yelled with his mouth moving in a human-like way. Suddenly he turned his hind quarters in our direction. Into the sky, we were well on our way. Hubert had kicked us with a tremendous force that sent us so high in the air. My soul is imprinted with the sounds, visions and terror that I felt falling down into the canyon. The two of us died in midair.